Hi everyone, and welcome. My name is Franklin, and as an engineer on the VR Integrity team, I work on projects that help users stay safe while enjoying VR socially. Today, we're going to be talking about both sides of that coin, namely through multiplayer and integrity APIs. More specifically, first, we'll get into some multiplayer API highlights and upcoming features. Then, we'll hear from the developers of Golf Plus about how they've integrated our multiplayer APIs. And finally, I'll come back to tell you about the blocking API, a feature that increases safety, trust, and continuity for your app's users. With that, I'll kick it off to Dan to get us started. Thanks, Franklin. Hi, my name is Dan, and I will be previewing some exciting new releases today. But before that, I want to do a quick recap of our multiplayer service offerings. MetaQuest users are a social group. To help people get together in VR, we've built out a set of multiplayer services as part of our platform SDK. The platform SDK has many features, so today, I want to highlight two fundamental building blocks for multiplayer experiences, destinations and group presence. Destinations allow users to discover the latest content, jump into experiences directly, and coordinate with friends. Destinations are flexible concepts that you can tailor to your specific app. Here are some examples of how Beat Saber, Golf Plus, and Meta Horizon Worlds have implemented destinations. In Beat Saber, each destination is a song. Golf Plus created destinations for their different game modes. Meta Horizon Worlds has a lobby destination for people to hang out in before exploring other places. Group presence facilitates social interaction by showing users what their friends are up to. This can also help drive organic discovery of your apps. Together, destinations and group presence enable something we call VR travel. The process of helping friends get together in the same instance of an immersive app. Users have three ways to travel in VR today. Group launch, app invites, and invite links. Group launch lets players start from a party with their friends before jumping into an app together. App invites allow players to invite their friends to the app that they're already in. Player can either use the system menu to bring up the invite panel or invite their friends to an in-app UI. Invite links is our newest invite feature. Players can share an URL to get together in a destination from the MetaQuest mobile app or in VR. Last year, we highlighted how Ready at Dawn implemented destinations and group presence in Echo VR to increase weekly active users and sessions with friends. Since then, the team has made significant strides in improving these services. This year, we have several exciting announcements. Reliability has been a huge focus for us. We want to ensure that when users travel in VR, they get to their intended destinations. We've migrated the travel system to a more stable infrastructure with plans to improve the present service later this year. We're also adding new tools to help MetaQuest users better navigate travel interruptions caused by tutorials, IAPs, and app updates. Destinations are core to our strategy to display more real-time, relevant content to users. So we'll be featuring destinations more often on the Explore tab and other VR surfaces. This could be a great way to showcase experiences within your app outside of the store. To make it easier to implement destinations, we are doing away with the lengthy destination approval process. Destinations will be available instantly, and we'll use machine learning to help check that published destinations meet certain source policies. Look for this change to go live later this year. We are also working on a new app-to-app -app travel API. 
you can implement this into your app to give users the ability to travel from one store app to another. This helps enable travel to other apps that you own or to apps that you partner with. During Connect last year, we walked through Shared Spaces as an example of how you can add multiplayer services to your app. This year, I am excited to preview a new playable multiplayer demo. Here's a quick teaser video. Wow, that was awesome. This demo app will be available on App Lab and on GitHub later this year. All right, you've heard a lot from me about multiplayer services. Now I want to tee it off to Ryan, the founder and CEO of Golf Plus, to hear about how his team has implemented multiplayer services in their app. Can't hit them all again. Yeah, good ball. Oh, come on. Oh, Oh, God. Ooh, that's true. Oh, baby. That's it. Oh, you like that nice. for a footy? That might be. That looks good. Go. Oh, yeah. Come on. Come on. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh man. Hi, I'm Ryan Engel, founder and CEO of Golf Plus. In real life, golf is a very social game. A big part of the magic of golf is sharing the experience with friends, so we wanted to capture that magic while developing Golf Plus and make it as easy as possible for friends to play around in golf together in VR. Multiplayer services have made that process easier for us, and I'd like to cover a couple of the services we implemented to help players connect. First, I'd like to talk about implementation. Initial implementation took a few days, and we started by reading through the documentation available at developer.oculus.com. Each API is well-defined and has a testing section to help developers test their implementation before it's publicly available. I'd recommend reading through the overviews of each area you're considering implementing before development begins to get a full picture of what the feature is capable of and how you'll be able to test if it's working as intended. Next, I'd like to talk about the first multiplayer API we added to Golf Plus. It's called Destinations and Group Presence. This feature allows our players to see what friends are doing within Golf Plus without having to contact them directly. One of the challenges of VR is coordinating where and how to meet up in-game and this service helps solve that problem by allowing us to define specific destinations in-game and let players join their friends within those destinations. Overall, this helps players understand what their friends are doing in-game and increases the odds of a person noticing their friend is playing our game and deciding to hop in and join versus playing a different game. We're big fans of the social connection that VR creates, and this API helps make it easier to connect without external communication. Another API we added support for is deep linking. Deep links allow us to drop players into specific parts of the game using a web link. We've set up deep links that let you create a Topgolf bay and send the link to friends to hop directly into that bay. The link can even be included in a calendar invite instead of a video call link. And anecdotally, we've heard people often use them to do their one-on-ones at work. We also use deep links to support third-party tournaments and get-togethers. 
A separate association uses them to allow groups of people to all click a link and instantly show up on the first tee with the group of people that you want to play with. If a room is full, we create a new room and new people join that room until it's full or the game starts. This allows the same links to be used every week and makes it easy to join a group without asking about room names or invites. It's especially helpful if you have a group of people where everyone isn't a friend. Multiplayer services have been critical when developing Golf Plus to make the app more social and bring people together. Now I'm going to hand it over to Franklin, who is going to talk more about how apps can help users feel safe while in VR. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Ryan. That's awesome. OK, multiplayer gaming is great, but now let's be realistic and imagine a scenario I would bet everyone here is unfortunately familiar with. You're playing a game, and suddenly the gaming banter has gone too far to the point of harassment. It doesn't really matter why. If you can't get rid of them quickly, your experience is ruined. And even worse, if you see them again and again and again, you're going to start to get turned off from that app. In many cases, indeed for over 40% of users, according to Unity's research, this is the moment when they decide to leave an app. And certainly, some of these do not come back. So in addition to being obviously bad for users, these experiences are also bad for all of us here today who, of course, want to provide the safe experiences that help maximize user retention and engagement and enjoyment. With that goal in mind, we at Meta want to offer tools for dealing with tricky scenarios like these, and the blocking API is a great example that can be used flexibly to help. Blocking, in general, is a well-established and familiar method of self-protection, often the first thing users turn to. Yes, reporting and enforcement can help in the long run, but giving users the power to protect themselves in that moment provides the empowerment and comfort that can really make all the difference in the user's experience. Indeed, many users already use our platform blocking, and with only a few lines of code, you can respect all of these explicit safety preferences. That is a big step towards keeping the experiences in your app free of the sort of unnecessary harm that comes from a user that you could have known was blocked, but did not. Furthermore, a rising tide lifts all boats. By creating blocks that can then be respected in other apps, you'll also be helping make the rest of the ecosystem safer. Now, the API that grants access to this data is straightforward for developers as well as for users. Since we have a lot of developers here today, let's start with that. Like I said, it's pretty simple. To write data, there is a single API in the platform SDK that takes in a target user ID and pops up a platform dialog where the user can confirm or cancel the block. You'll see what this looks like in just a minute. Either way, the result is passed back to your app via a callback. And of course, there is also a corresponding API that does the exact same for unblocking. To read data, there is another API for querying which of your app's users a given user has blocked. So that you can incorporate this info in the way that makes the most sense for your app, this query can be run on the client, also via the platform SDK, or directly from your server via Graph API. Moving on to the user side, here's a bit of a demo to illustrate the experience. Users can block others in two clicks, directly from MetaQuest Home or any app that integrates the API. This block can then apply on the platform as well as in all integrated apps. For example, if Dan is harassing me in my favorite multiplayer game, I can use their in-game block button or action to open the block dialog. Once I click Confirm, Dan will also be blocked from contacting me on the platform, for example, following or messaging me, as well as from abusing me within other integrated apps. I'd specifically like to call out that the demo you see here comes from one of a handful of public sample apps we produce called Shared Spaces that anyone can look to for example code for this and other APIs. It's a great resource, though I do hope your apps have stronger blocking protection than just a spinning icon. 
When it comes to enforcing blocks, we've been thinking a lot about your needs as developers. We know you have a lot going on, so we're prioritizing flexibility in our suggested use of this API. Is your matchmaking pool not big enough to handle blocks? That's OK. There are still lots of small product improvements you can make without requiring significant work or compromising your overall experience. For example, since chat is a common form of abuse, you can mute text and voice comms between blocked users. Visually, you can hide or gray out avatars, or you can pop up a warning and offer blockers an easy escape. But, of course, the most thorough solution is to just put them in separate lobbies or matches when you can. As I said, while we are here to help, we leave this exact decision up to you and what makes the most sense for the social experience you're offering. After all, something is better than nothing. In the end, our goal is to make users feel safe and be safe. So when all is said and done, I want to convince you to provide blocking protections. If you build your own, I would be happy to see it. But if you are going to have blocking, why not save yourself some time while simultaneously leveling it up by leveraging our platform and graph? Thanks for taking the time to be here. Feel free to scan the codes for links to some of the things we mentioned. And I cannot wait to see all of the amazing experiences you all are going to make to bring people together responsibly.